Hey, what's up guys? This is Krishna here. Welcome to this project walkthrough of Side Effects Daily Challenge Mardini 2022 Day 6 Match Size Project File. <laughs> that was a mouthful title. But anyway, um, I thought I'd, I'd share it because I have a nice little trick I used in this one. Okay, so um, let me uh, go through this. So I've got a, a grid here, um, 10 by 9.84 size and in the X uh, sorry in the YZ plane okay and I'm poly extruding that um, like that okay so you can see what's going on here right um, and I'm also giving it a little bit of an inset okay so over here so it doesn't kind of overlap or whatever okay so that's that and then I um, I've also um, selected some front group and side group as well um, I, I don't think I used this really um, but anyway I'll keep it on and by the way this project file is available for free to download from gumroad.com uh, the project file is in the description check it out okay so um, I'm uh, giving it a color which is the extrude side and I'm uh, basically turning it all black and then I'm giving the front a random color and uh, class is set to primitive so each one of these have a random color and then I'm deleting all the blacks basically isolating the uh, front okay and then uh, this the um, important bit here or the nice little trick um, this one and this one so partition um, I've created a rule so um, based on the primnum primnum and in front it's a p the letter P basically uh, if I look at the geometry spreadsheet here okay so I've created a bunch of groups like um, based on the number of um, planes we got here okay or the front panels so if I were to say right I want only two by two here uh, that's two two less four by four maybe okay so we've got nine in total here so if you look at the geometry spreadsheet now down here you'll have nine groups so zero two eight okay that's the idea behind it so each one of these is a a group on its own all right or by itself so let me reset this back to I believe it was eight twelve yeah okay so <clears throat> I've created the groups now okay and then I'm using for each per group and I think this is the nice little trick I was talking to you about okay whereby I'm saying okay I'm gonna bring in uh, I'm gonna create a name attribute and I'm gonna use a group mask whichever starts with a P asterisk because we call this um, P prim number okay so the uh, groups will be called P1 P0 P2 etc etc all right so I've done that now so if I now look at the geometry spreadsheet I should see uh, what is it it's in primitive there it is so the names are all here okay and guess what I can then use that name as the piece attribute and run for each four of those okay so <laughs> that's the trick basically um, this is uh, for each loop for groups okay if that makes sense but it the groups got to be in sequential order all right so uh, once inside the group uh, what am I doing let me just um, select a single pass oh this is yeah I'm just gonna get rid of that lighting okay uh, what am I doing so I'm poly extruding what's coming in okay so what we are getting is this here okay and I'm poly extruding that and then beveling it a little bit just for you know rendering purposes this is not really necessary it'll work either way so this model whatever is coming in here here will be matched to the size of this box here okay so that's why I'm using it and that's why you can see just for a minimum and scale to fit okay um, I didn't end up using this dash transform but um, anyway it's it's there okay um, so that's that for each loop However, what I'm also doing is using this switch because I have a number of inputs here, like uh, seven in total. 
And what I'm doing is I'm selecting the input based on the um, detail per iteration, okay? Um, based on iteration randomness, okay, basically. So what am I saying? First of all, pick um, the iteration from the detail, okay? So this is where that is coming from, okay? Okay, so I'm picking that up and then I'm saying, give me a number, a random number for this iteration. And then I'm fitting that from zero to one to um, zero to six, because we have uh, seven inputs in total here. Okay, so zero to six will be seven. I'm also um, adding a random number here, rounding it to the time. Therefore, um, every time, the time is you know one two etc the orders and and how the um setup is changes so for example reset this okay so this is a 24 frame per second project okay so every 24th frame the time is going to change because it's rounded okay it's rounded so every 24th or the 25th frame it'll move from zero to one to two to etc so Let's check it out. Okay, so it's doing it on the 12th frame. And that's because um, on the 13th frame, it's gone over 0.5. So when you round a number over 0.5 will automatically become, you know, one. So that's what that is. So I just random, randomized it, you know, and then I chose whichever I liked the best to do the render. Um, I don't remember which one, uh, which frame I used here, but anyway. Uh, also, it is important to pack these because each one of them, if they're unpacked, you're going to get some trouble. Okay, so pack them and then match them and then unpack them, then group them as objects. Um, on this side, I have this poly extruded, um, you know, shelf. Okay, and um, I've colored them, uh, which is a an exact copy of, uh, I believe, this one here. So it's a, it's a, if you right click here and go to actions, you can say create reference copy. And that's what that is. So I only need to change one place. Okay. Uh, this one here. Uh, what am I deleting here? As a matter of fact. Yeah. Okay. I did, I did go through that. Okay. And then I'm grouping them as shelf and, um, shelf one. And on this side, I've got another poly extrude, which I believe is for the back wall. Okay. Um, so if I look at this one there, so that's going to be the back wall. Okay. And I'm reversing its normals and then I'm creating shelf to, I could have called it shelf back wall or whatever, but I didn't. Right. So that's that. And there we got all of these nicely lined up. And if you were to, let's say, you know what, uh, let me just get rid of that. I'll just leave it there for the moment. Okay. <clears throat> So if I were to go ahead and say, right, I want this uh, to be lower, it'll push back in. Okay. Um, so if I template this here, if I move this, it moves along with the shelf, you know, let me just revert it back. I don't remember now if it was one or yeah. Okay. It was negative one. All right. And, uh, if you increase the inset, uh, for this, you should look at it this way. So if I were to increase the inset, it'll uh, get smaller because the inset will be considered in the match box. Uh, sorry, match size, not match box in the match size. Okay. Um, so that's that. So I'm just going to put this back to 0 0.04. Okay, good. And now you can obviously change the number you want. Um, you know, you can just keep adding to this. Okay. So or reducing it, whatever, you know, it's pretty cool, I think. Right. So that's that. And as far as the rendering goes, so I um, created one material for object and one for the shelf. Okay. And then I go into material. So you got your shelf here, which is nothing fancy, really. It's, um, I think shelf could be iron or something. Um, but you know, I, I don't remember now. Um, it's not iron for sure because 
uh, iron doesn't have a diffuse weight on. So I, I must have custom made it. All right, that's fine. It, but it's simple, okay, so you don't need to. I mean, you can check it out in the project file anyway. Um, for objects, though, I did uh, bring in a texture that is available on videocopilot.net, okay, but you got to pay for it. But anyway, I, I have it, so. Um, so I have this null where I copy this path, okay, and these uh, texture samplers will automatically retrieve that information. So once I change the path, it will automatically assign the diffuse, specular, and normal maps accordingly. So I don't need to keep changing it in, in three separate texture samplers, you know? So that's what that is. And um, once I did that, uh, sampling, yeah, uh, DOF enabled, depth of field, okay? And I set the sampling here, and the uh, focal length is 105. It's very important because uh, the higher the focal length, or the shallow the depth of field, okay? So uh, that's all that, and I did a 4K resolution um, render, okay? So Light Dome, I used Polyhaven HDRI file, okay? I converted to ASUS color space, and then I also used the IES lights, for which these profiles are available for free. Oh, by the way, HDR is also available for free. I'll leave these uh, links in the description for, for you to get them, okay? All right, so that's the end of that. Um, if you feel generous, um, you can certainly, uh, you know, pay what you want on Gumroad for this file, but uh, it is available for free, okay? I appreciate uh, your time today, and uh, have a great day. See you next time.